We have somebody very interesting. She's somebody who's possibly given me sort of woman goals, if I can really call it that, because just so many hats she wears. She's not just a household name now because of Shark Tank, but she's also a very active marathon runner. She is a mom of two. Uh, she is a CEO, so she's one of the most inspiring people that really that you can find around. So joining me today, oh my God, and we are twinning. Good morning, Vinita, and welcome to TVC. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thank you so much, Arnold, and congratulations for the new format, the new show. Uh, very excited to appear here in one of the first few episodes, and I hope we can make it come. Yes, we must make it count and I'm sure that's going to be the case. But let me sort of dive in a little bit and tell people, introduce people to a bit of your story as well. Your is a story of a 23-year-old who decided not to take up a job uh, where the package was only one CR, right? It wasn't, it wasn't much. You decided not to do that and you said that I will go and be my own boss. How does a 23-year-old think like that? I want to understand what was going on in your brain at that point and how did you have such massive self-belief? Well, uh, very honestly, Sonal, I don't think I understood how hard it's going to be. <laughs> so if you ask me honestly, if I had known that it's a Well, uh, very honestly, Sonal, I don't think I understood how hard it's going to be. <laughs> so if you ask me honestly, if I had known that it's a journey that's going to take like 20 years and uh, it's going to be full of like a lot of failures, a lot of rejections, uh, maybe I wouldn't have had the courage to do it. Uh, but, you know, when you're 23, um, the good thing that happens is that there's a lot of bravado um, <laughs> and you have a lot of uh, self-belief. Hmm. And uh, I just assume that it's going to be much easier to build your own business. Uh, but in hindsight, when I look back, I think um, no career is easy, uh, hmm. whether you start your own business or you want to be world class in anything that you do. It does take 15, 20 years. It takes wow. uh, a lot of risks. It takes uh, a lot of consistency and showing up every single day, uh, even in the face of rejection, failure, and you know sometimes a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of stress around what the hell am I doing with my life? So I think I went through all of those uh, journeys. Mm -hmm. But luckily, mm -hmm. most entrepreneurs have this bias for action, where mm -hmm. um, without really thinking about what the risks uh, in this were, uh, I jumped into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first seven years were really, really hard because it was one failure after another. And, yeah. you know, it's something that they don't teach you at business school, like really how to run a business uh, because they can't. Every day is like a new story. Uh, but I, I think so, you know, I, I don't give myself a lot of credit for having the courage to start up back then because it wasn't thought through. Mm -hmm. But I do give myself credit for hanging in there for 17 years through those failures mm. and showing up every single day for my consumers, even when uh, there was no money left in the bank account. And, you know, it, I didn't know how I would pay the next month's salaries. But even on those days, mm. I showed up. And I think uh, that's what really matters, just showing yeah. up every day, decade after decade. Mm. And uh, when you're in your 20s, you think mm. 20 years is a long time. Uh, but actually, uh, most careers get built if you want to do something world class over a 20 year period. Wow. And it's important to have that patience mm. and uh, not just as an entrepreneur, but um, as anybody who's trying to be really good at something, it's important to stay consistent, be patient. So yours is clearly a story of uh, perseverance and grit and that is now becoming a theme on TBC. We had uh, Rohan Bopanna yesterday and he also said it took him 20 years to become world number one but he kept at it. He fought through age, he fought through a lot of challenges to ensure that he get there. But you know, I, this is what I hear a lot of entrepreneurs talk about. They say that it is about showing up day after day but can you share some tools perhaps uh, on how exactly do you do it? Like what's your pick me up? If I'm somebody who's starting up and I'm feeling really down and out, I feel this is it, I've hit rock bottom. Uh, can you share with us what do you do at that moment? Yeah, 
yeah i think uh, you know when you are in your 20s it's all about like milestones right you're really thinking about oh i'm going to get like my valuations going to be this month i'm going to get 200 crore i'm going to uh, get to a bigger office i'm going to get a big car i'm going to you know have a house it's all about you know you're thinking about milestones uh, but you realize eventually that it's actually no matter how cliche it sounds but it's really the journey that matters a lot more and i think the only thing that as an entrepreneur you have to do i don't think there is any other option mm. is to enjoy the journey and to be excited about the journey and i really you know reminded myself every day that this this suffering this pain this rejection this failure is all part of the plan you know that's mm. how it's meant to be and um i really fell in love with our consumers with the products that i was creating with the brand that i was building with the india story with mm. the people i was working with you know mm. we have the pleasure of having 75% women who work at sugar and i was excited yes. about that mm. and i didn't worry myself beyond mm. the point about you know the getting to the next milestone mm. and you know just getting to um, the next big zero um, in your top line bottom line and i just uh, you know those are important and you have to obviously uh, speak about them at every board meeting <laughs> but unless you really Very truly enjoy yeah. the process and yeah. you really remind yourself that mm. uh, you know it's at the end of the day mm. uh, nobody gets happy because of x number of digits in their bank account but they really get happy about you know what they're building what they're doing and who they're doing it with um mm. i could be grateful and i mm. was able to tell myself that yeah i mean you know i might be uh, in the you know gutter right now but i'm still looking at the stars i have hope i have optimism i have a great team to work with and you know just those little bits of gratitude about how far i had come hmm. and uh, just you know enjoying the moments uh, got me through those tough years hmm. and celebrating small wins i think that's really uh, what a lot of people also identify with i'm also a huge believer in celebrating these little things that's what keeps you going but uh, and and kudos to you by the way for having over 70% uh, workforce as women so that's a good win as well but your journey is also one where you've sort of flipped to the other side let's talk about shark tank now you've become a household name because of that you're helping other women entrepreneurs as well but i've always been curious to know um as much as joy i'm sure as much as fame as much as uh, reach that you're get getting with this show what is the one thing that you guys don't enjoy yeah so firstly i i do feel very grateful you know since you spoke about women if you see globally less than 2.5% of the global capital goes to women led businesses it's a shame yeah. right and on shark tank more than 50% of the capital i invest goes to women founders and i'm really proud of that because you know at the end of the day you you know you to change the narrative you have to start with yourself so it is a huge privilege and uh, you know even bigger than that when i was growing up there was a dearth of women role models mm. and i really believed for a few years in my life that uh, to be a successful entrepreneur I had to be a man because you know there weren't any women who were really doing this well and uh, now when i meet like 8 year old girls at airports and malls uh, you know they come and tell me that they have the dream of becoming entrepreneurs they have the ambition of creating the largest company yeah. in the world yeah. and their moms are in agreement and it's a very different world as far as you know young girls and their ambition is concerned and you're the mom of a 6 month old little girl yes. so i'm sure you know for you also to think that your daughter is yeah. going to grow up in a time where she thinks anything is possible that's mm. amazing right so yeah. for me to be a part of that transition uh, it's very exciting the the yeah. challenge that happens is that mm. you know in india there's there is just so many people and there are lack of resources mm. so which is when the hustle starts when the hustle starts it means that you could be in a washroom at the airport and somebody can ask you for funding what? right and which you can be you know all the time like i just you know people assume that i'm just carrying like a ton of money with me to doling it out which is not possible because at the end of the day i have to prioritize allocation of resources including time and money and i feel that you know the part that i don't like is having mm. to say no so often um to you know requests mm. whether it's for capital or for mentorship i really wish i could do more but mm. if i don't prioritize enough 
then i wouldn't be doing justice to my own um you know business family and my uh, investy companies and which is why i have to say no a lot so i think that's mm. the part that i would say i don't enjoy as much but, but wait hold on you saying people have actually done that they've knocked your washroom door caught you up on um elevators and said madam i have this pitch please hear me out <laughs> no no when i bump into at public washrooms in a mall or at a mm. airport um so many times yeah i mean i've had i've had people in elevators giving pictures i've had people like in the middle of a run i'm like you know running in the morning and i've had people come and give me a pitch and i always that's why whenever somebody comes i first start with telling them that uh, you know i'm not doing uh, too many deals outside mm-hmm. of shark tank because so that they don't you know spend a lot of time and energy giving a big pitch uh but yeah it happens all the time yeah but uh, you know i keep thinking about it this entire startup culture it's not just a trend it's a mindset that india is perhaps in you know right now the entire country it's so nice to see uh, girls and boys young girls and boys saying it's not just doctors engineers anymore it's not just offbeat careers we want to be our own boss and that is that is what a lot of you and role models like you are really doing so that's really really lovely to see but you talked about hustle culture now this is something uh, that also bothers me sometime we hear so much about the downside of the hustle culture we are in this age when thankfully mental illness has been talked about so openly and a lot of it perpetrating also on how uh, just kids who are starting out in big companies or even in startups etc feel sometimes not to name someone and not to be generic but we hear a lot of these stories a lot of breakdowns happen a lot of no balancing act really at home what's your take on it and what's our way out of it yeah so uh, firstly i am a product of the millennial generation and i did grow up uh, you know knowing that you can't control the outcome but you can control the input which Same is yeah. the kind of effort mm. you put in and hard work matters so i have always been a big believer of working hard and you know working hard for your dreams uh, but you know many times and which is hustle at the end of the day and which is why hustle i always have used internally also as a also as a very positive term because it is empowered me for becoming who i am and like i said mm. like the entrepreneur who you know like ask somebody in a washroom um you know for funding you can call it hustle uh, you can call it not understanding the boundary mm. and uh, you can you know there can be a positive connotation or a negative connotation for it mm. but mm. i i feel that um, you know in a lot of cases when it's taken to extreme it leads to an organization where there is a lack of respect for people mm. uh, there is a lot of focus on things like face time where you know politics start coming in it matters how many um, you know how your perception of the effort that you putting in rather than the actual effort and i think that's where hustle can go from being a positive term to a negative term mm-hmm. so i i feel that you know rather than calling hustle um which i i think is an empowering term because mm-hmm. at the end of the day um you know to do anything great you have to hustle you have to take risk you have to take a chance you have to pitch to somebody in a washroom somewhere um and i, I you know i i like to focus on the positives of hustle which is working hard and taking risks and um but it has to be within i think uh, you know with respect for other people which means that when it goes towards becoming toxic in terms of an environment where people are not able to you know take care of their health or their families for the sake of that hustle uh, then it's crossing the line and i feel that as an organization it's important to get the balance right yeah and um as an organization which has 75% women i think a lot about getting that balance right not just for myself but mm. for everybody who works here and mm. uh, which is why it is you know i ensured that there is a culture of mm. output more than just input mm. uh, but it mm. you know it's very rare to get output with of the input if you understand what i mean yeah yeah it's a, it's a balance yeah, but very well said answer very mature as well we really hope other startups are also listening to this as we go around in the program but you talked about balancing act and uh, I really want to know this. How, how are you managing this? You are a mom of two. You are a marathon runner. You are a CEO. You are now a judge on Shark Tank. You are mentoring other people. I mean, I'm going crazy with just one kid at home and this job. How are you doing this? How many PTAs have you missed? And where are you on the guilt trip journey? 
um luckily have just missed one pta so far uh, which my husband managed to show up for so between both of us we're there um i think i i do think that a lot of times uh, women get uh, more trapped in the whole guilt management rather than the time management zone and um, i think i have figured over a period of time that uh, you know the only way to deal with guilt is to you know uh, is to remind yourself that uh, you you know you're doing the best that you can and not seek perfection and i feel that a lot of uh, what i do is possible because i have a lot of help which means i don't do everything myself yeah and uh, i'm able to delegate both at home and at work mm. uh, because i'm not seeking perfection all the time and i'm just um i you know i'm trying to just enjoy the moment and the journey um and i feel that really being a mother makes me a better founder and being a founder makes me a better mother and which is why i'm very proud of both my roles hmm. uh, which is why i don't let that you know which is how i don't let that guilt creep into my um you know my mental um uh, mindset every day because i think guilt is absolutely the one emotion that derails our journey of enjoying this phase and uh, i think over a period of time we're just getting enough help hmm. uh, managing my energy rather than my time and not seeking perfection um i able to get by but it's not easy mm. i don't claim to make it sound like it's easy it's been hard mm. um and i'm always learning and i'm always you know talking to other founders and you know learning from their best practices uh but i think one of the places where i've been super lucky is that i like i mentioned earlier i have a husband who puts yeah. in half the work yeah. at yeah. home yeah. and i think that for me is a conversation which every woman needs to have Hmm. because um you know the data says that in india um women are putting in six times more hours of unpaid domestic chores compared to men and there is no way we can have equality at work if that ratio at home is 1 is to 6 well so said i'm well very said. lucky yeah. hmm. without having tough conversations i have 50% support from my husband hmm. uh, but for all the women out there i think whatever tough conversations it takes it's important to make sure there is no perfect equation but it's hmm. important to make sure that both the partners are putting in enough effort at home in raising children as well as taking care of domestic chores uh, because it's you know not a job that can be done uh, I, i mean it's much harder for women when they have hmm. to do it by themselves right such an inspiring conversation i'm loving this vinita but i want to shift gears a little bit right now and i want you to put on your ceo hat and tell me something you know totally business related now we're looking at 2024 very differently it's a year when a lot of startups are hitting ipo everyone is looking uh, at that with a bit of a caution we know what happened with paytm we know what happened with a lot the 2021 entire cycle uh, so how are you reading this trend how are you looking at uh, companies startups like farmeasy swiggy oyo ola electric all of them now in the fray uh, to hit ipos uh, what's the what's the thing to watch out for here So in India, if you look at 2021, um, it was a year when there was almost more than 40 billion of private capital that was invested in startups. Uh, that number in 23 was down to 11 billion. So it's been much harder as far as private markets are concerned. Hmm. Whereas if you look at public markets, I mean the Sensex is you know not showing any signs of uh, going down. Uh, it's been phenomenal growth over the last 12 months. um hmm. at about 73000 now if i'm not mistaken hmm. and um which also means that in public markets companies are getting uh valued more uh than in private markets and hmm. this is happening after a long time you know in 2021 it was absolutely the other way hmm. uh whereas in 2024 uh, there is suddenly public versus private market the difference in the valuation is a lot uh, for all types of businesses mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. i think um, it's good for companies to go public because they're getting more value over there and there mm. is a lot more uh, liquidity in public markets yeah. at the moment mm. but yes the mm. fundamentals have become very important mm. today 
and uh, i think that's very good because uh, it's you know companies are being weighed on the basis of their bottom line hmm. so all of the companies that you mentioned are it's important for them to either show profits or a road to profitability hmm. Hmm. um things which weren't spoken about earlier as far as startups were concerned hmm. uh, like uh, working capital cash flow uh, roce uh, which is return on the capital expenditure yeah. all of yeah. that hmm. those are becoming hmm. terms which are super critical even in the case of startups now hmm. and the hmm. third is corporate governance so you know even startups are not getting the benefit of doubt saying that you're a smaller company so you can uh, avoid some of these uh, corporate governance practices that hmm. make investors uh, hmm. feel confident about the hmm. investment sebi is making sure that all of these companies that are filing a drhp hmm. have to go through the all the co- uh, corporate governance uh, guidelines uh, hmm. that sebi has so i think there's a lot more pressure on boards and on these companies to hmm. do the right thing in terms of having a solid bottom right. line having yeah. solid fundamentals hmm. and having corporate governance in place yeah i also think profitability along with predictability along with the steady flow is what sebi is also focusing in on and what a lot of startups now hitting ipo this year uh, should be focusing on as well and that's clearly what the street is sort of watching out for but you said earlier that you don't see this uh, funding winter going anywhere in 2024 you've said in earlier interviews that it's going to be much harder to raise uh, money this year yeah private markets are still quite tough um, and if anybody is you know there are a lot of companies that are still not ready to list and for them the only option is to either figure out a way to generate cash flow from business or um, you know raise in private markets at whatever mm. valuation they get mm. so private market like i said we are sitting at one fourth the kind of capital that was annually being deployed 3 years back and mm. this is not going to change any time soon Uh, mm. so it is very important for companies to keep basics in mind first whatever valuation you're getting you know as much as you can raise because it's not that you can be hopeful that anything will change in the next 12 months mm. uh secondly like be you know there is entrepreneurs are always optimistic but mm. sometimes that optimism can borderline become delusional <laughs> where you start hoping that you are sitting on a 6 months runway yeah. and that some capital will come in from somewhere and save you yeah. because that's not happening and i'm seeing companies mm. go down to the wire which is very dangerous because mm. then you are talking about jobs being put at risk you're talking about your reputation being put at risk well, and does. no amount mm. of mm. optimism mm. is mm. worth putting you know jobs and reputation at risk so i think my mm. other message is that Hmm. you know if unless you have an you know a signed agreement in hand hmm. make sure that you have a 12 to 18 months runway just be absolutely paranoid in terms of hmm. cash flow and just don't end up in a situation where you have to let down vendors and hmm. employees because hmm. at the end hmm. of the day that is what brings down the entire startup ecosystem with so much mm. difficulty moms and dads are letting their kids join startups because they feel that you know it's not the scary um, you know super risky career anymore yeah, yeah. but if we can go back 5 years in time to mm. that era where people would be like whatever you do don't join a startup yeah, yeah. if you know there are a lot of companies that take these risks yeah. and uh, let, have to let people go so i think think about it you know very very cautiously when there is somebody else's job uh, at stake uh, which is why make sure you have 12 to 18 months runway at least so that you can go over this funding hmm. winter because uh, to believe that this funding winter as far as private markets are concerned hmm. will get over any time soon is not happening purely delusional because i'm not seeing any signs of that happening You know, this is a very interesting conversation. I could could all could just go on and on. I want to pick your brains about camaraderie with other women entrepreneurs and so on. But that's perhaps a story for another day. We have to conclude now. But every time a guest comes on Breakfast Club, we ask them about their morning mantra. What is it that they're doing the first thing in the morning? Is it coffee? Is it chai? Is it yoga? Is it meditation? Is it this really? nice song uh, that you wake up to how does vinita wake up to be uh, the boss lady that she is 
uh for me after my black coffee in the morning the go to things always a workout because i do feel that just you know taking that like one hour out for myself in the morning is the greatest gift that i can give to my family and to my workplace because i just it just makes me a much better mother and a much better ceo and um so for me my morning mantra is make making time for myself first thing in the morning before i make time for the rest of the world yeah center yourself before you can go and fix everything else around you thanks vinita so much this was really really lovely this is just the kind of conversation we want to have every morning so that our days are also made and hopefully we'll do more of these in the days to come thanks so much for joining us on tvc